this is only Golo Travel with the kids or traveling solo Marco Polo, come on now, let's go Marco why it's snowing in my lair? Because it's my favorite time of year! It's Christmas! It still doesn't make sense though. Christmas edition of Legend Has It. Behold an exclusive sit-down interview with the Italian Christmas icon, La Befana. I'm not a witch, I'm enchanted. As you've never seen her before. Just because I fly around on a broom doesn't make me a witch. Hear the real story. You got a visit from the three kings on their way to Bethlehem, but you did not join them. Why? I thought it was a ploy to get me to buy magazine subscriptions. And then of course you did the same with the shepherds. Yeah, I have this weird thing about sheep. Hear the details of her unsuccessful journey. Following a star isn't exactly like having GPS. And try doing it while you're still learning how to fly a broomstick. Feel her sorrow as she recounts her missed opportunity. Sometimes I walk by nativity scenes and imagine a little figurine of myself beside the manger. And then I cry uncontrollably. If you could do it all over again, what would you have done differently? Probably would have taken a sweater. Witness her mounting frustrations. Halloween destroyed my life! I literally don't go out anymore. Except for Christmas. I'm so sick of people asking me where the flying monkeys are. Santa Claus ripped me off. I was stuffing stockings way before he was. Lump of coal, my idea. Hear the secrets you never knew. Now, of course, we are using a glossy filter to make you look younger, but you are, in fact, quite hideous. Tell us, how old are you exactly? It's La Befana, up close and personal, tonight on Legend Has It with Marco Curric. Starting at 8, 7 central, only on TMP. Here's a popular Italian Christmas tradition. A large ornamental bowl holds gifts for each member of the family. They all choose a gift at random. 
If it's theirs, they keep it. If it's not, they put it back and try again. That's cool, I guess. Not very efficient, though. What do they call it? The urn of fate. What is the winter solstice? Is it A, an English term that refers to the charitable Christmas spirit? Or B, a sciencey thing that has something to do with the shifting of the earth? Or C, an accessory that you put on the sole of your shoe that's much cheaper than buying a brand new pair of snowshoes? The correct answer is B. It's the day when the angle of the sun is as low as it will go. In other words, it's the shortest day of the year. In the Northern Hemisphere, it happens right before Christmas time. But cultures all around the world have been celebrating winter solstice long before they were celebrating Christmas. So I think it deserves some props, don't you? You just got brain back! Hey there! Let's take a look at some holiday emails! Okay, dear Marco, I'm celebrating Hanukkah. Oh, that's nice. I also have a severe case of amnesia. Hmm. Can you tell me what I'm supposed to do with this candly thing? Signed, Zamisht in the Moyech. Oh, well, dear whatever. Uh, that thing is called a menorah, okay? It has eight candles, which represent the eight days of Hanukkah. Okay, so on the first night, you put a candle in the far right and you light it, okay? And the second night, you light that one and another candle right next to it, okay? And then the third night, you light three candles and then so on and so forth until the whole thing is lit on the eighth night. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hey, Marco, that's great, but there's nine candle holders in this thingy. Okay, the candle in the middle is called the Shemesh. I think that's the Hebrew word for the sun. Anyway, that's a helper candle, okay? You light that one first, and you use that one to light all the other candles. That's very important, okay? Now, happy festival of lights there, forgetful guy. to the people in Ukraine? Is it A, St. Nicholas, or B, Kris Kringle, or C, Father Frost and the Snowflake Girl? The correct answer is C. Father Frost is a lot like Santa, but his sleigh only has three reindeer, so it's not as powerful, but she turns on a die. Snowflake Girl is like the assistant. She dresses in this uh, fuzzy, bluey, silvery getup, and she probably does most of the work. <laughs> but one thing is for sure, they both know how to cheat. Okay, that was lame. You just got brain back! 
Scotland, it is believed to be bad luck to let your fires go out on Christmas Eve, since that is when the elves are abroad. Only a raging fire, they say, can keep the elves from shimmying down your fireplace and into your homes to do who knows what! So in Scotland, on Christmas Eve, they have to keep up defensive walls of fire to ward off roving packs of mischievous elves? I guess, yeah. That is awesome! 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 Hello again! Whew! Still cold! <clears throat> you know, Christmas in Europe is a magical time. And it's where most American holiday traditions got started. Whether you're talking about Santa Claus, Father Christmas, Befana, Krampus, uh, whether you're caroling from door to door, or if you're just warming up by the Yule log near the Christmas tree and the nativity scene on the windowsill with the stockings on the mantle, chances are you're observing a tradition that started in Europe. <laughs> Boy, I could go for a Yule log right about now. <laughs> You know who I am? I, I do not know. What, who? I am a famous Italian explorer. Oh, are you Marco Polo? Yes. Hey, it's Christmas in the city. It's it's lights. It's uh, it's kids. It's folks buying presents for each other. It's love. It's it's the best time of year, don't you think? I do. Do you know Saint Nicholas? Yes. We celebrate Saint Nicholas Day. It's a pretty good holiday, but it's on December sixth, not the twenty fifth. Do you know what I celebrate? What? I celebrate St. Nicholas Day. Oh. Do you've heard of St. Nicholas? Uh-huh. Yes? What do you know about St. Nicholas? That he wears this really big robe. Wears a really big robe. Have you heard of St. Nicholas Day? Yes. That's what I celebrate. Do you know what day that is? Sixth. Sixth? She knows when St. Nicholas Day is. St. Nicholas is a little, little different than your, uh, what do you call him? Santa, 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 Santa Claus. Santos, Santos Claus. Sidewalks, busy sidewalks, dressed in holiday style. In the air, there's a feeling of St. Nicholas Day. Have you ever heard of Krampus? Krampus is a Christmas demon. Christmas demon? And he comes uh, to all the kids who are bad. Oh, and uh, yeah. I don't remember what he does to them, but it's not good. You know what I do for St. Nicholas Day? You put your shoes out. That's right, I put my shoes out in the front door and then uh, St. Nicholas comes by and he puts some change in there and then you know what I do with the money? You spend it. We take the money and we buy another pair of shoes. Huh? Huh? You see where I'm going with this? So the next year I get more money and then I keep doing that until I have like a hundred pairs of shoes outside of my door. Do you like shoes? Yeah. How many pairs of shoes do you have? A lot. Maybe like 50. 50? There you go. You could get a lot of money if you put all your shoes outside your door on St. Nicholas Day. That's a good idea, right? Well, thank you. I came up with it myself. What's the best way for me to avoid the Krampus? To avoid the Krampus? <laughs> well, you do not go in the water after eating lunch. Oh, that's that's okay. one thing you do right. to avoid the Krampus. Ha ha ha! St. Nicholas Day, December 6th. Make sure you do it. He he goes everywhere. It's just like Santa Claus. Is that, uh, is that St. Nicholas in there? Is that him? Oh, he let himself go. <laughs> I didn't realize Marco Polo was so humorous. Yes, yeah, so, well, I'm a funny guy, that's what they say. Okay, let's take a look at some more emails. Ah, dear Marco, I'm celebrating Kwanzaa. Oh, cool. I also have a severe case of amnesia. Hmm. Can you tell me what I'm supposed to do with this candly thing? I think I'm deja vuing. Signed, Dazed and Concerned. Well, dear Dazed, that thing is actually called a canara. It holds seven candles that represent the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Okay, you put a black candle in the middle and then red and green candles on either side. Now you light the black candle on the first day, which is December 26th, and then you alternate between red and green on the following days until they're all lit on New Year's Day. That's how you do it. Happy Kwanzaa, glad I could help. Well, today, 
I decided to go on an adventure and have a go at something a little more unusual from the Nordic countries. Oh, that's Norway, Sweden, Excuse Finland. Excuse me. Thank you. It's called Lufisk, and it is enjoyed by the Nordic folk during the holiday season. So what is it? It's jellied whitefish. I know it's an acquired taste, but I figured since Marco always wins with his ridiculous culinary blunders that I might as well go out on a limb. Your turn. Uh, uh, well, uh, I brought you some figgy pudding. You know, like this song. Now bring us some figgy pudding. Now bring us some figgy pudding. Ahem. Now bring. That is chocolate pudding with figs stuck in it. Don't you even know what figgy pudding is? <laughs> Do I know what figgy? Do I know what figgy pudding is? I have been to to London, to Wales, to the lakes and the dales, to the borders, to the peaks, to Penzance and Cornwall, to from Norfolk to Suffolk. I have dined with the Henrys, the Edwards, the Richards, and I played Billy Shakes and Charlie Dickens and Jane Austen all in the same episode. And you have the nerve to ask me, do I know what figgy pudding is? <laughs> well, do you? No, I have no idea. Figgy pudding is a thick, steamed cake made with fruit, sometimes nuts, that's doused with brandy and set on fire. You're a steamed cake with fruit and doused in fire and set on- Really? Let's see what the judges have decided. And the winner is Marco Polo! I'm on all recipes! Okay, so I've heard about elf armies and totally sweet Christmas bowls named after magic cards. I'm officially on board this whole Christmas around the world thing. So, what else you got? In Canada, Christmas celebrations are more or less similar to those in the US. That's it? Sometimes, they serve smoked salmon alongside the traditional Christmas turkey. Why would you even bring up Canada? Good evening, and thank you for joining us. On this day in the year 1857, one of history's most beloved Christmas carols was unleashed into the world. Joining us now, live via some sort of space-time doohickey, is the composer of this famous tune, Mr. James Lord Pierpont. Hello, Jimmy! Uh, it's James, if you please. Right, so Jimmy, I assume your release party is going well. Uh, yes, I'm not sure why you would assume that on account that no one is here presently. Well, don't let it get you down, Jimmy. Rest assured, today your song is probably the most recognizable Christmas carol in the <coughs> world. I'm sorry, there must be some mistake. I did not write a Christmas carol of any sort. You're the guy who wrote Jingle Bells, right? Uh, I wrote a song entitled One Horse Open Sleigh, which is a song about the joys of sleigh racing. Um, pretty sure that's the song I'm talking about. Are there jingle bells in it? <laughs> well, first of all, there is no such thing as a jingle bell, as you put it. The lyric you refer to is actually an imperative verb. It is a chorus that rejoices in the jingling of the bells and urges them to jingle all the way, as it were. Yep, yep, that's the one, that's jingle bells. One horse, open sleigh. It's called one horse, open sleigh. Whatever, look, I'm telling you, people just can't get enough of this song around Christmas time. Hey, they even sang it in space! That's awesome, isn't it? Yes, but it's not a Christmas song. It's a slaying song. May I remind you that I do not mention Christmas once in this song. Look, buddy, I didn't write the history book here. I'm just telling you your song is a Christmas carol. And my name is not Buddy. Well, you need to look at the bright side here, buddy. Your song will live on through the end of time. 
Isn't that exciting? I have been here all day, and I've only sold two copies! Mr. Pierpont, I'm trying to cheer you up here. You need to stop being such a mope. Come on, cheer up! What say you and me sing a few bars, eh? Come on, I'm a huge fan! Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. Come on! Or the fields we go. Come on, you do the next part. Come on! Laughing all the way. That's it. Bells on bobtail ring. Making, Making spirits, spirits bright. bright. What fun wait, it wait, is wait, to wait, ride. Wait. Don't say fun. I hate that word. It's joy. Oh, jingle bells, Batman's wait, bells, wait, wait, Robin wait, wait, wait. What are you doing? I'm, what? I'm seeing the chorus. Well, that's not how the chorus goes. Well, it, it is now. It goes like this. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Look, Jimmy, it's just a Christmas carol. You don't it's have to be- It's a slaying song! It's about racing cutters from Medford to Malden Square and impressing ladies in the process. You don't even know the other verses, do you? Do you? Well, that's a trick question, isn't it? Ah, I don't even like Christmas. Okay, I think that's all the time we have here, Ebenezer. My name is James! Okay! This interview is over. No, wait, Jimmy, don't. Oh. Is it my fault when these things happen? I'm still trying to figure it out. Hey, Marka, what is your touch? Is it A, a 5,000 year old festival for the sun? Or B, a tsunami that wiped out the North Pole in 1852? Yule time! Or C, a detergent that cleans firewood? The correct answer is A. Though today it is associated with Christmas, Yuletide actually refers to the Scandinavian Yule Festival, which was an old winter solstice tradition. The word Yule means feast, so Yuletide actually means the time of the feast. Other Yuletide traditions include uh, the Yule Log and kissing under the mistletoe. But don't worry, we won't get into that. <laughs> kissing. You just got brain back! Here we go. Got uh, time for one more. There we are. Dear Marco, I am celebrating winter solstice with a giant Yule log in the fireplace. Oh, that sounds great. I also have a severe case of amnesia. I'm noticing a pattern here. Can you remind me how to put out a large fire in my living room? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> signed, inadvertently destructive. Uh, uh, dear inadvertently, uh, uh, you should step away from your computer and get out of your house. Seriously. Try calling the fire department too. They're the ones who put out fires. Hope you'll remember the number for 911. <laughs> no, but seriously, I wish you the best of luck. Well, kids, I, I hope you enjoyed the Christmas special. <laughs> uh, remember to learn about the world, to, to learn about the world, 
You have to learn about yourself. So keep exploring. Uh, mm. Have a safe holiday. Please love me, Dad. Buon Natale. Foilasia v Nachten. And all the other languages and everybody else. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way.